Hello everyone, welcome to Cybersecurity Matters. My name is Christian Redshaw and joining me as always is my multi-talented co-host, <laughs> Mr. Dominic Vogel. Good Dominic, morning, sir. Good morning. <laughs> or good afternoon. Good afternoon. I lost track of time. <laughs> so who do we have in the hot seat today? Well, we have uh, our very good friend, Steve Wilson, who is the uh, president of the local uh, uh, ACFE, which is the Association of Certified uh, Forensics Examiners. I think yeah. I got that right. Steve yeah. might have to correct me on that one. But uh, Steve is just one of the smartest people I think you and I have ever met, and he just a uh, great friend for us and we're looking great. forward to just having a great chat with him. Yeah, very stoked to have Steve. Yeah. So I'm going to invite Steve in to sit in this chair. I'm going to move over here. We'll bring a chair we'll in for chair. me yeah. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Steve, welcome to the show. It's so awesome to have you with us today. Oh, uh, Christian and Dominic, thank you very much. Really appreciate the opportunity to come in and speak with you guys. This is uh, an amazing opportunity. That's awesome. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely will. Yeah. So tell us about yourself. All right. What's so, your What's your story? Yeah. So in a bit of a nutshell. So you know, I'll go back to the law enforcement. So way back, it was uh, in the military. Went from there. Spent some time with the Delta Police Department. Um, from there, private sector was in the banking for a bit. Worked for one of the big accounting firms. You look like a banker today. I look like a bit. Yes. You know what? It's, yeah. I'm all dressed up today. I took the seal of the closet. Banker took boss. All the cat hair off. <laughs> looks there. really good. And then uh, kind of jumped around a bit, um, and uh, and you know it, it's kind of funny because I say to my, a lot of people now that I'm kind of, I'd like to say I'm semi-retired. And as soon as I say that, it's like, hey, be interested in doing a yeah. one-year engagement or two-year engagement. So I'm kind of got some pretty cool stuff going on right now. I'm doing some stuff at BCIT, some contract work there. Um, Which for those of us that are not from this area is yeah. education, post-secondary yeah, education. Yeah, British Columbia Institute of Technology doing yeah. some consulting work for them. I'm um, doing my PhD in the UK at the moment. Um, and then just uh, a lot of different things as engagements come up. So it's it's been really exciting. So that's sound really busy. busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For semi-retired. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to reach. <laughs> it's funny how that kind of works, right? So, but uh, it's good. It's kind of like you're living this reverse psychology. It's like, I'm retired. But I think subconsciously you want to be really busy. Is that is that what's going on? You know, yeah. It, it's funny. People that know me when I, when I, uh, say that they're like what do you mean like you're always doing something mm -hmm. every time i meet you you're doing something different and mm -hmm. uh you know what it's just i love what i do yeah so and retirement for me is getting to travel maybe pick and choose the jobs you want to focus yeah. on and mm -hmm. um, meet lots of great people learning how about yeah. golf? Do you golf? No, I don't golf. You don't well, my golf. daughter's do a I. huge golfer. In wow. fact, she was supposed to go to Arizona in a couple of weeks, but that the trip got canceled. So. so in terms of your areas of expertise, mm -hmm. what, what are people approaching you for? Mm -hmm. um, kind of all over the place in consulting at the innovation side. Um, background is mostly fraud and, mm -hmm. and digital forensics. So the fraud, um, is like I mentioned earlier, so I'm the president of the Vancouver chapter of the Association mm -hmm. of Certified Fraud Examiners. Um, so I spent a lot of time with them. Um, as far as engagements, it, it's interesting. You know, this is one of the things I was going to talk about today because you know, going into Fraud Awareness Month next mm -hmm. month, um, is that we're seeing a, a big increase in the amount of um, people that are asking to, for me to come in and do presentations and mm -hmm. lunch and learns and stuff, and and it's all fraud related for the most part. But it's unusual because you know I've been pitching this for years, and it's it wasn't getting a lot of buy-in. And then last year, it's like I have to turn people away. That's mm -hmm. how busy it's getting. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, because I'm always asking, curious, like why, you know, why there's so much interest in this? Mm -hmm. And it's cyber-related. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you guys come into the mm -hmm. picture. It's very, they've been hit by ransomware, or they've had a data breach, and all of a sudden now it's part of moving forward and putting a plan and policy in place. Mm -hmm. There's a fraud prevention piece as well. Mm -hmm. So I get kind of see both sides of it. Yeah, and then you do the reactive side a bit mm -hmm. too on the forensics. Yeah, so on the forensics piece, and you know, I, I say this a lot of people like when they when they talk cyber, still, uh, for myself personally, probably 95% of the files I'm dealing with, it, it's like um, incident related, but it, it's more insider theft. Um, mm -hmm. So we're looking at what the employees have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's been an incident, they may call a you know, cybersecurity team, but then it ends up being, at the end of the day, digital forensics, looking at their phones, looking at their mm -hmm. laptops. Um, and that's kind of where it all kind of goes back to, right? So cool. it works out really well that way. How, how, I mean, being in, the, in that field for, for so long, uh, how has uh, obviously technology has had a huge impact, especially yes. in the past few years? You know, I'm, uh, I'm assuming you know, the field of uh, forensics and fraud investigation used to be much more, I guess, more physical uh, investigation, and it's now becoming more technical investigation. What's that balance like? Is it, is it, is it mostly technical now? or? 
You know what? I, I would say it's probably a, a good balance of both, and they both kind of tie into each, each other. So, you know, a good example of that is like I, I do a lot of presentations on what I call 21st century fraud investigation, and it's all learning technology. How is technology applied to typical investigations? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing case management software now. Um, even when it comes to interviewing, like I've had traditional interview, paper and pen, talking to people, and now they're audio recorded, video recorded. Mm -hmm. um, you can get the USB recorders now that people are using. You know, I've had some people even say, is it gonna get to the point where it's gonna be all like telecommunication mm -hmm. and you're gonna be doing an interview and they're gonna be able to tell from the way that the body language is, <laughs> the way it's being mm -hmm. video that they're lying or not. I yeah. mean, it's crazy how quickly technology is kind of taking over that space. Yeah. but. The traditional piece of being able to talk to the client yeah. and be able to interview people and yeah. build a rapport, yeah. that's never going to go away. Right. It's always going to be there. Yeah. 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 Um, and then from the technology side, even with the client side of it, it's just being able to communicate in plain language to them that, you know, okay, yes, this is what's happened. They've, they've based at the end of the day, they've to use their phone, they've taken screenshots and they've taken that information to, uh, you know, another vendor. Right, right. Um, it's just trying to explain exactly what happened in common terms for the, for the client. Right. In in, in terms in, in terms of uh, you mentioned you know, March is Fraud Prevention mm -hmm. Month. So yep. for you know small and mid-sized businesses, what are you know one or two areas that they should really focus on or communicate either internally or uh, as as an executive or business owner, be aware for for fraud prevention. Like, yeah. What are sort of the main themes? It's you know it's really interesting. So I think it was about two weeks ago they had the 2019 uh, report from Canadian Anti Fraud Center about mm. the top 10 scams that mm -hmm. they were come out. Yeah. And you know the three big ones were so we're still looking at uh, th you know the three big ones were like identity theft, yes. um, ransomware, yeah. um, and I'm trying to remember what the third one was, but it it's all still technology. Based, right? Oh, phishing. That's yeah. what the third one was. Um, and then you still, you know, you look at the stats and they said it was, you know, something like um, 23,000 reports last year to the Canadian Anti Fraud Center and, and like a total of 460,000 million in, in losses total. And statistically, we know that very few people actually report. Yes. So we're mm, well it's under over. <laughs> yeah. No one ever does because yeah. it's become coming like white noise and no one's yeah. going to do anything about it or yeah. I'm embarrassed. There's lots yeah. of different reasons for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the big scope, like we're talking, we're talking well over like 51 million, probably more as a realistic number for the amount of people that are actually being hit yeah. um, by some type of like fraud or, or ransomware or phishing. And then losses, we're not talking millions, we're in the billions yeah. now realistically. Yeah. So it's a huge issue. And it's always, it always still falls back to the same um, things when we talk about prevention, it's awareness, putting controls in place, um, and ed educating your staff, right? Mm -hmm. Let them know like phishing is a huge one, right? Yeah. What to do and having those policies in place and training people up so they're yeah. aware of that. Yeah, it can make a big difference. The the uh, the, the notion um, of being able to you're saying how things are uh, underreported. I know this is a question we get asked quite a bit, both on, from a personal perspective and mm -hmm. a business perspective. Is you know, when do you report a fraud to to the RCMP or you know if you're in the states that the yeah. FBI? You know, and not all of them are created e equal. You know, the, you know, as an example, uh, a few days ago, someone asked me. They said you know, they fell for a phishing scam and they, they lost 500 bucks. And they're like, well, should I call the RCMP? And I was you know what. You can call them; it'll get registered somewhere. But that's not nothing's going to happen. You're not going to get that 500 bucks back. What is what are some maybe high level uh, guidelines in terms of when they should thresholds. Uh, or thresholds? Yeah, when they should report and when they shouldn't. Um, well, I always try to tell people report as much as you can. Yeah. No matter what it is, even if you don't think anything's going to happen, take the time to report it. Report it. And the reason to do that is then you're going to get a more accurate review of stats and where things are currently at. Sure. And to give you a really good example of that, so a report I did. Three or four years ago, I, I looked at what was going on in Canada and, and some other countries around the world. And so the UK, same same thing happened there, but there were being more and more reporting. And what was happening that it ended up becoming a political issue. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they're going to put a lot more resources into it and trying to help mitigate these yeah. incidents from happening. Yeah. It's not perfect, yeah. um, but it certainly makes it uh, something more that the, the public is aware of. Yeah. Um, and then. As far as going going from there, if other people are aware of it, then they can watch out for it. Yeah. If you don't say anything, um, then it could happen to someone else, and yeah. they probably wouldn't do the same thing, right? right. right. So it's re reporting is really important. Okay. Obviously, at an organizational level, I mean, you've got policies and procedures in place. It may not be something that you want right. to come out and more tell everyone. Yeah, <laughs> forthright about. I mean, yeah. you have a policy and procedure yeah. for doing that, yeah. which 
I'm sure you guys deal with all the time. Yeah. yeah. The, the uh, and the interesting thing with you know with the, in this digital age now, with, especially with fraud, in which uh, you know there's on the personal side and there's yeah. on the business side, and you know people are being hit on both sides. Uh, and one of the uh, scams, which I think has has increased since the advent of online dating, mm -hmm. and these romance scams. Yes. You know, and you, you hear these countless stories. Yeah. Uh, and I remember one back in the uh, my uh, FI days when I was working at. Uh, First West, where there was a you know story where you know someone had uh, you know a romance with someone online, met, mm -hmm. never actually met them, yeah. and they wanted to fire them a whole bunch <clears throat> of money, uh, yeah. and you know that person w did not understand or refused to believe that it was a fraud, and up losing thousands, tens yeah. of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, what? How, how is techno is technology sort of allowing for fraud to evolve more rapidly? Because you know, in, and this is a very long way to question, so I apologize. But yeah, no, no. What, you know, one of the things that you know, when the, we hear stories in the media, when the media reaches out to us, they say, yeah. "Well, is, is fraud happening more now? And wh why is fraud happening now?" And I always say, "Well, frauds always happened. You know, even if we go back to ancient Egypt, there were fraudsters. Yes. Yeah. Right? It just the the mechanisms now, and I guess the barrier to entry is that much lower. So it's yeah. I guess technology is serving as an enabler." In, in, in that cap uh, capability. Like, yeah, like, is, absolutely. Is, 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 and from drawing this back, and now I realize- To I, make a long question. I just realized yeah. I didn't have a question. I'm just talking <laughs> here. Uh, but my original question back to the romance scam yeah. uh, piece there, just because, uh, especially for a lot of uh, uh, seniors, uh, you know, we, we hear that quite a bit. Uh, do you, from your point of view, what are some good takeaways that people should be on the lookout for in, in general? Because I know a lot of people are worried about their uh, single parents or if they're yeah. actually widowed. You know, like I said, it's something that we hear about time and time again. Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and great question. So two points Sorry to that. Sorry for being so long. No, <laughs> not, not at all. I was, I was trying to think at the same time of, okay, that's good. I've got some response to that. And then the business side, I thought, oh, I've got some good stuff for that. But huge issue. Um, myself, personally, I've dealt with multiple um, investigations involving um, romance scam. Yeah. Um, I've seen millions of dollars lost from people. Um, Certainly the technology piece has made it easier for people. Um, and it's, it's, it's really easy to say to someone, well, you know, have you verified? What have you, have you, yeah. have you checked? But it's, it's really important to understand that, that it's not just a matter of clicking on a website, seeing a photo, and then it's a quick text message back and forth. They've, you know, in a lot of these cases, they're spending months building a relationship yeah. with that person. And even though, you know, some of the dating sites will say, well, you know, beware of this, beware of that, you know, a couple of things the scammers will do is, you know, say, well, let's get off of this chat yeah. site and let's go somewhere else. Yeah. Right away, boom. Or, so now or there's... text or something. Yeah, yep. and even, and, and they're so good at building relationships because it's, it's a very much social engineering. Yeah. Okay, you've, let's take, for example, like recent widower, right? Yeah. So let's, in, you know, one example, as she came in with it, so there was a huge insurance payout. Yeah. So I think it was just over a million dollars. So she's lonely, she's yeah. got a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a friend suggests, you know, try the online dating thing, she yeah. does that. Um, of course, not knowing any better, she puts everything out there on her profile. Person on the other end just says, okay, this is what they're looking for, this is what they're interested mm -hmm. in. Check the boxes. You know, check all the boxes. Yeah. They reach out to them, have contact, and you know the emails. And I've seen some of the emails, and I'm telling you, it's phenomenal, yeah. like poetry. Like I'm getting sucked into yeah. some of the stuff. It's not, <laughs> yeah. you know, you think, well, you know, the spelling and the grammar wrong. It's not like that no. anymore. It's no. very. There's so much money yes. to be made. Yeah. They're very, very sophisticated what they're doing, and they lure the people in, and they'll spend three, four months building a relationship. You know, and it's everything. Well, I'm stationed in Afghanistan right now. I yeah. can't wait to come and see you. Yeah. Um, we'll have long walks together on the beach. And I love dogs too. And I love kids. These yeah. are pictures of my kids. Okay. You name it. Yeah. They are. They are the dream match. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that continues. Yeah. And and then it then it ends up being okay. I'll meet you in a couple of weeks. And then well. I, I can't get on my flight, I've lost my passport, yeah. or I've had a vehicle breakdown, or one of my kids has cancer. Yeah. Mm. Um, can you ha send me some money to help me out? Yeah. And then you go through the whole routine, like I spent a whole day talking about this, but it's, yeah, it's so sad. Yeah. And it's, and, and then it's, and, you know, they'll start sending small chunks of money, a thousand here, yeah. $1,500 yeah. here. And then it's like 20,000, 30,000. And then the bank, you know, wherever they're using the bank to say, well, where's this going? Are you, you know, this person? Okay, sign this release, and, and then at some times the financial institution will cut them off and say, well, we're not doing these transfers for you anymore. The bad guys know all this. They already have a routine. Yep. Okay, we'll split the payments off, take, okay. you know, one here, one there, you know, and, and, oh, and this is my 
lawyer, he'll help you deal with, with them on this side, and it goes on and on and on. You know, and it's till, it's either, either till they've mentioned this to someone else who said, no, oh, that doesn't sound right, yeah. or they've run out of money, yeah. or, or, you know, in one case where it's, they'd sent another chunk of money, they were gonna meet them at the airport, and then on the way to, to Canada, they were detained, yeah. you know, and they come in reporting saying, hey, my, my spouse is detained in Sweden, for example, yeah. can you look into this? And right away, my first thought, did you send any money? Yeah. And it'll always start with, yeah, a couple thousand dollars. And then after you get it out, it's like, yeah. oh, half a million? Yeah. And it goes from there. Yeah. I see that time and time again. Yeah. And it it's, goes again back with the reporting. No one wants to report it because they're embarrassed. Yes. Okay. Um, if, if they're elderly and they've got kids <clears throat> that are concerned about them being yeah. on their own, yeah. they won't say anything because yeah. it could have been their inheritance. It could have been their um, uh, money they were going to use for college education. Yeah. Um, their kids get could get really upset and say, "Well, you can't handle your finances. We're mm -hmm. going to put you in a home." Or yeah. Rent. Yeah. so many different things happen there, yeah. right? And then it, it just goes on. They report it. Of course, it doesn't go anywhere because these people don't really exist. Yes. You know, you can trace it, but yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Extremely, extremely troublesome. And that's where I, I really encourage people to report it. Go to the media. Get those stories out there because yeah. it, even if you're helping one person from becoming a victim, yes. it makes a big difference. Absolutely. And, and it's not easy for the victims either because they put it on a media and I've, I've seen it where you have other people phoning in or sending commentaries that like, you know, you should have known better. Like yeah. who would, who? It's not helpful. Yeah, it's not helpful, <laughs> right? So yeah. it, it keeps people from reporting. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the other side of that I was going to quickly touch on is the business side. So small, medium-sized business, same thing. They, yeah. they distribute all over the world, having a tight month. The bad guys know this as well. All of a sudden there's a big order somewhere say we, we need to ship you know hundred thousand dollars worth of laptops to dubai for example yeah. um of course they ship the product the payment shows up put the payment in their account payment bounces and then it's like okay we're out hundred and fifty thousand dollars whatever what do we do at this yeah. point i mean you can trace them and in some cases you can actually see where the money's sitting in account somewhere but then what a lot of people don't realize is law enforcement doesn't have the resources where they just pack up mm -hmm. you know get right. the suitcases and go chase the bad no. guy down yeah no. You're looking at private contractors, and then you know, in and one there would be like a threshold there. Absolutely, that would make it not worth it yeah. for them to allocate more it, resources. No, and then they just don't have the resource for it. Like in some cases, it's like, okay, we've got a contractor over there um, that can go and do the investigation, but a retainer is going to be half a million dollars. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, and that's it, right? So it's really having policies and procedures in place, um, and making sure you're checking off those boxes. Don't get all excited, right? I yeah, mean, it's yeah. no different if it's personal or business. It's too good to be true, at most likely. Yeah, no, that's very true. And yeah. it's it's interesting, you know, this this how just how I hate throwing around the word sophisticated, but they mm -hmm. have really graduated from a lot of the traditional advice that a lot of people have given been given yep. about you know spelling, grammar. Mm -hmm. you know, obvious, a lot of those obvious red flags are no longer red flags, and. Uh, I, I even remember back you know, going back almost ten years. Uh, it was the early days of online dating uh, when I was a lonely twenty-something, and uh, 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 before I met my wife, same thing. There was someone who I was chatting with, and, and again, this yeah. is ten years ago. Yeah. Right? And you know, they said, "Hey, let's talk on another platform." So we texted for a while, and uh, uh, this is uh, this is I was still a security professional, so you know, earlier in my career, but I still remember that so vividly that it seemed so real. And then even at the point where they asked for money, I was like, okay, no, I, I gotta help this person out. And I, I distinctly remember, you know, going into the car, and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> like yeah. I, I didn't even dawn on me. Then as I was getting in the car, I was like, well, okay, wait a second, what the hell? This is am not I doing something here? I normally do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it uh, and again, ten, we we go over ten years now. It's just become that much more believable, that much more sophisticated. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's unbelievable. And I tell you, I've I've heard some stories, um, like, of people actually going overseas like to North Africa to yeah. try and help these people that you know they figured were real and yeah. you know and getting <laughs> in all kinds of bad situations yeah. over there I mean yeah. it's just horrific yeah. some of the mm -hmm. stuff people go through wow. it, it yeah. seems to me like you're coming from the right place and you you mentioned those negative comments on social media mm -hmm. that the criticizing yep. when, you know the fool or an idiot these people are yep. whereas you know there's a different approach which is the lessons that can be learned from these victims you know yep. whether that be the individual you know, seniors, or it could be uh, nonprofit organizations or, or, uh, or businesses. Yeah. What are the lessons that we can learn so that we can help other people yeah. avoid going Absolutely, this? And, and that's, you know, kind of like with you guys with, uh, with uh, the cybersecurity piece. I mean, going in and, and putting policies and procedures in place, 
having those basic c controls to begin with and, and doing the education piece. And, you know, I, I, I say this to people all the time, March is Fraud Prevention Month, but it doesn't only happen in March. It's throughout no. the year, right? So it should be something that's, yeah. okay, sure. it's March. Frauds we're going to do, yeah, we're going to do, uh, <laughs> we're going to do a lunch and learn. We're going to bring Steve in, yeah. we're, you know, okay, everybody's good now. And, yeah. and that's it for the rest of the year. No, it's something yeah. you have to have ongoing. That box is checked. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's got to be almost a, a part of your culture. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Hey, the, uh, do you see the awareness level? I'll focus more on the small and mid-sized businesses. Yeah. Do you see that awareness level um, improving year over year? Are there still a lot of people and organizations that are stuck in yesteryear? You know, the comparison I'll give is when, from a, a cybersecurity awareness perspective, yeah. it's hard to see um, whether it's improving year over year. You know, certain companies, if they're investing and in doing it right, are improving. But on the whole, I would say awareness hasn't really gone up. In fact. If anything, there's still more people who are stuck in a 1995 mm -hmm. mindset yeah. about, oh, Nigerian print scams, yeah, if, yeah we're, we, we can identify that, that's not a problem. We have antivirus on the firewall, we're good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? That's, yeah, that's 1995 good, but that's not 2020 good. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see that level of awareness increasing at all, year over year? My perspective from the fraud awareness level, I, um, I will say no. And I'll say it, it's, it's kind of like what you're saying, it'll never happen to us, we're small, who, yep. who would care? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then until they get hit. And yeah. then it's kind of like incident response. It's like, okay, it's, you know, or we trusted our bookkeeper. Yeah. Uh, the bank phoned me. I can't even meet payroll now. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, yeah. you, sh you should have really, you know, and it, it's, it's like I was saying, I always try to pitch people. Like, it costs nothing to go in and do a lunch and learn, you yeah. know, and, yeah. you know, I'm going to meet you. You're going to benefit from it. You, your staff's going to benefit from it. Yeah. You're not, I was not getting the buy-in, yeah. but cyber, the cyber piece of it's different. It's, and I think the big difference is it's everywhere all the time. We're hearing about it 24 seven. Like I can go on social media, LinkedIn, and every day there's someone else getting yeah. breached. It scares people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, and that's the difference. Yeah. So I'm getting Very called true. in and I'm doing the fraud prevention and, and a lot, you know, we're talking about phishing, we're talking, you know, online awareness and best yeah. practices, yeah. but it's really the whole, cybersecurity market and the landscape that's really been huge mm -hmm. as far as impact and it, I, which is good yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you know i wanted to dig in more onto the forensic side and mm -hmm. the incident response and yeah. some of the the things that you get into with that and the types of organizations that you help but uh, we're out of time yeah <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so we're going to bring you back and, okay. and dig into that guests. one at yeah. some point if, if you're willing to, <laughs> Absolutely. to come and join yeah. us yeah. 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 Love to. we really appreciate you taking sure. time out to chat with us really Steve. appreciate it thank you very much awesome. thank you right. uh, Christian and I will be back uh, momentarily to wrap things up Dominic awesome conversation with Steve the man's epic he is and such deep wells and deep conviction yeah. full of knowledge full of uh, mm -hmm. wisdom you know my big takeaway from him was just that lessons learned instead of criticizing people online for for falling for fraud scams yep. Yep. or criticizing businesses mm -hmm. let's have some compassion mm -hmm. let's get some lessons learned yep. and let's help people avoid being taken in by these scams absolutely i mean <clears throat> my big takeaway other than the power suit he was rocking there which oh, was yeah. fantastic duke can wear a suit like no other yeah. but uh uh f you know for me i think one of the big takeaways again was that whole notion of how he was talking about how fraud has evolved and how technology has, again, played a role both from a you know, positive side in terms of being able to allow from a forensics perspective or a fraud investigation. You know, there's, mm -hmm. the, there's the positive side of yep. the powers technology has unleashed, but also mm -hmm. how technology has really lowered the barrier mm -hmm. for people to commit fraud. Uh, um, you know, it's no longer just people who are career fraudsters. It's, it's lowered it to the ranks in which people with you know, amateur uh, in the amateur ranks can, mm -hmm. can uh, uh, commit fraud. So uh, it was really interesting to hear his, his, his perspective on that, you know, and just how technology has very much shaped society as, as it is today. Mm -hmm. And cyber, cyber criminals and fraudsters have yeah. raised the bar in terms of their sophistication, Yes. yet the bar yeah. remains low when it yeah. comes to awareness and protection. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. another big takeaway here for today. <laughs> that was a juicy interview. <laughs> so thanks for watching. You can check out our podcasts and other podcasts on conversationsthatmatter.tv, as well as the Conversations That Matter YouTube channel under Cybersecurity Matters playlist, or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. And we will see you next week.